All right, so now we move into lesson three of relations and functions, and it's dealing with X and Y intercepts and interpret interpreting relationships. So if we look at the beginning here, we're looking at a review of specifically what a relation is. A relation to, between two quantities can specifically be represented graphically by the set of ordered pairs. So for our first blank here, we're going to have ordered pairs. Then we look at the next piece of our review and it says that the first component of the ordered pair is the x coordinate and we know this to be the independent variable. So we can put independent and we can short form it like this. It is our independent variable. The second component of an, any ordered pair where an ordered pair is our x and y, well that second component is the y and we know this is the output or the dependent variable. So we can put dependent as the short form there or depend. Now, exploring the x and y intercepts, this is a really important concept that we're going to cover a ton over this unit. Now, if we look at the following graphs, they want us to explore the x-intercepts of all three to start off. So they say list the coordinates of the point where each of them cross the x-axis. In the case of the first graph, it crosses at negative 3, so I'm going to put negative 3 and 0. Because we know that for our x-intercepts, it's going to be where y is equal to 0, or along the x-axis here. I go to my next example, or graph 2, and we see that it crosses at negative 2 and crosses at positive 3. Therefore, my two x-intercepts are negative 2 and 0 and 3 and 0. All right, and then we move to our third graph, which says that we have points here and here where it crosses the x-axis. That is at negative 4 and positive 4. So we're going to put negative 4, 0, and then positive 4 and 0. Now, what do all of these points have in common? Their y value is equal to 0. So we're going to put y value is 0. Okay, so the y value is 0 according to this. Now, on the same graphs, what we're going to do is look at this and say, well, what are the coordinates in regards to the x-intercepts, or sorry, the y-intercepts, I should say. So now we're going to go up to graph 1, and we say the y-intercept takes place at positive 5 here. So when we talk, look at the y-intercept, well, it's going to be, 0 for x, 5 for y. We go up to our graph for graph 2, and we see that it crosses the y-axis at positive 6 here. And so we're going to say that this is a value of 0 and 6. And then we go over to our graph 3, which is this circular graph. And we put a point here and a point here. And we say that it crosses the y-axis at positive 4, negative 4. Therefore, our points are 0 and negative 4, and then 0 and positive 4. Now, we look at these and we say, what do they all have in common? Their x value is equal to zero. So we say x value is zero. Now, what we've done here is we've set the stage for something that's very, very important in relations and functions, and that's being able to figure out these x and y intercepts and knowing specifically what an x and y intercept entails. We're gonna go into that in, in detail on our next example when we solve for these algebraically. Now, let's flip the page here. Our x and y intercepts, our x intercepts is the x coordinate in relation to where it crosses the x axis. So it's the ordered pair where the graph intersects the x axis. Similarly, we have the y intercept, which is the y coordinate of the ordered pair that intersects the y axis. How do we solve for both of these? Well, first of all, if we want our x intercept, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. And then if we're looking for our y intercept, we set x equal to zero and solve for y. So let's take a look at how this works in terms of applied examples. Suppose I give you this function here, 3y is equal to 5x plus 15, and I say I want to solve for the x and y intercepts. Well, from our previous page, we found that the x-intercept is when y is set to 0, and our y-intercept is when x is set to 0. Now, let's solve these algebraically by plugging in or substituting these values of y equals 0, x equals 0. So in the first example, when we're solving for our x-intercept, we're going to say 3 times 0 is equal to 5x plus 15. Well, anything times 0 is just 0, so we get 0 is equal to 5x plus 15. I subtract the 15 across from both sides here, so I get negative 15 on that side is equal to 5x. My last step is to divide by the 5 therefore giving me a value of x is equal to negative 3. Now, as an ordered pair, what would this be? Negative 3 and 0 for y. There we go. There is our answer in terms of what our x-intercept is in terms of an ordered pair and the specific value. Now, same thing for the y-intercept, except what we're going to make 0? We're going to make x equal to 0. So it's the opposite variable. Now, we have 3y is equal to 5 times 0 
plus 15. Well, anything times zero just goes away, so now we're left with 3y is equal to 15. I divide both sides by 3, therefore the y value is equal to 15 divided by 3, which is equal to 5. As an ordered pair, what do we put? 0 and 5, because the x value in this case is 0, and the y value is something specific. So there is our x and y intercepts of this equation. Now, similarly to how we just solved it on that one, we're going to take a different function, in this case something of degree 2 instead, so something being squared. We're going to look for our x and y intercepts where the x intercept has a y value equal to 0, the y intercept has an x value equal to 0. Let's plug these in. So we go x squared plus 0 squared is equal to 16. Now that's x squared is equal to 16. If I want to undo something that's being squared, I must square root it such that the x uh, squared and the square root cancel. Therefore, I'm going to get x is equal to plus minus the square root of 16, which is 4. And therefore, as my ordered pairs, I would get 4 and 0 and negative 4 and 0. Those are my two x-intercepts. Now, similarly, when we solve for the y-intercepts, we're going to let x equal to 0. So it's going to be 0 squared plus y squared is equal to 16. Remember, anything 0 squared or any number that's squared like this that's 0, it's going to go away, leaving us with y squared is equal to 16. I'm going to undo the operation of the y being squared by square rooting both sides, therefore canceling the square root and the squared value. And now I'm going to have y is equal to plus minus the square root of 16, yet again is equal to 4, but now my ordered pairs are 0 and negative 4, and then 0 and positive 4. So what I've done here is I've said, well, in terms of a y-intercept, we know the x value is equal to 0, so it should appear as 0 in the end. And then we know when we look for our x-intercepts, the y value is 0, therefore the y's must be 0. That is the characteristic that will always be true for these. So no matter what equation they give you to solve for your x-intercept, y must be equal to 0. When you want your y-intercept, x must be equal to 0. It's always the opposite variable is equal to 0. Now, continuing forward, we're going to look into this applied example where Lisa purchases a new car for $20,000, and the value of the car can be represented by the following formula, V equals 20,000 minus 1,250T. Now, what we would realize is that we could plug these values in, or our input in terms of years, into this equation here, and what we would found is that we would get a certain output in V. V being the value of the car in dollars and T being the age. So let's say we input zero in for T right here. Well, we would realize anything times zero just eliminates and therefore in the zeroth year of owning the car, we should expect the value to be the full value and the ordered pair should be zero and 20,000. Now, if I was to ask you, what is the next one? We're gonna take that input of two or two years have passed and see what that gives us. So we would say V is equal to 20,000 minus 1,250 times two. Well, this is actually gonna give us, in this case, 20,000 minus 2,500. The value after two years is equal to 17,500. So each two years we see, because this is a linear equation, and we, because the degree is one, we see it's a linear equation, the inputs are changing by a constant rate of two years, in two years, we see that the value drops $2,500 per every two years. So I'm going to continue that pattern without even needing to solve this algebraically. We have 15000 for the next year. And then minus another $2,500, that gives me 1250 There we go. Okay, as ordered pairs, we have 2 and 17500 uh, 17, We have 4 and 15000 And then we have 6 and 12500 Okay, I'm going to plot these on the grid that is to the right here. So we start off with zero time, 20,000 in terms of value. We then go to two years time and go to, in this case, 1750. So that's going to be roughly about here. We then go to four years and 15,000, which is going to put us about here. And then we go to six years and go to 12,500, which is going to put us right about, I want to make sure this is accurate, right about there. Now, what we want to do is connect the points with a straight line and extend that line, meaning I want to connect it through the axis point. So I'm going to draw a line straight down 
and then through here and get it roughly about here. And I'm just going to correct this line just to be a little bit straighter through those points there. So there's my line. Now what I can do is say, if I look at this line, it shouldn't extend further than the x-axis, meaning I shouldn't go below Reason being is that there's no such thing as the negative car value. So it's not going to go below here. The lowest point it will go will be right about here. Okay, now they ask us, what does the ordered pair 020 represent or 020,000? That's the original value of the car. At zero years, the car is worth 20,000. It's our y-intercept or more specifically, the new car value. So I'm going to put new car value at zero years. Okay, use the graph to estimate the t-intercept. What does the t-intercept represent? Well, our t-intercept is down here, and I'm going to approximate that that is roughly about 16 where it crosses. So we're going to say that the t-intercept, in this case, is equal to 16. What does that stand for? It's 16 years have passed. And more importantly, it's when there is $0 of value in the car. So there's zero dollars in value in the car at this point. Why? Because we're touching the x-axis, in this case the t-axis, and at 16 years we've reached all the way down to zero value. Now use the graph to estimate when we have three years, 10 years, and 14 years in terms of value. So what I'm going to do here is in red, I'm going to trace up from each of these markers here. So I'm going to look at the first one here, and I'm going to trace up from three and continue it all the way up until I reach our graph way, way up here. And I'm gonna say it's about here. Now it might even be lower, it might be about here. So I'm just gonna approximate and say it's about here. What does that put us at in terms of the value of the car? Well, it's about 16,000. So I can put 16,000 right here. At 10 years, I'm gonna draw a vertical line again up from 10 years and then right where it intersects the graph, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line over to the value, and I realize it's about 8,000 here, so I can say 8,000 here. And then in terms of 14 years, 14 years is roughly about here, which puts us roughly about here, and that's about 1,500. Now, that's all approximates based on a graph that was hand drawn. What we want to do is we want to use the formula to verify that this is true or maybe something slightly different. So after 10 years, what value do we get? Well, here's our formula. V is equal to the 20,000, which is the original value of the car, minus 1,250 times 10. Well, that's like saying we have 20,000 minus 12,500. And if I take that difference, the value after 10 years should be $7,500. All right. Now, when we were in class, we got that 7,500 pretty accurately, even on our graph up here. So 7,500 definitely makes sense and is the correct solution. But honestly, by drawing a hand-drawn graph to get about 8,000, that's really, really close to the actual answer of 7,500. Now, what we're going to do is use the graph in order to estimate when the car will be worth 5000 and then when it will be worth half the money. Well, at 5000 we can draw a line across and then draw a line down from there, and we would realize that roughly it's about 12 years of age. So we would say after 12 years, we would expect the car to be worth $5,000. Half of the purchase price? Well, half of the purchase price, if it retails for $20,000, half of the purchase price is here. And so we're going to draw a line all the way down. And we realize that we get about eight years is when it's going to be worth half as much as it was purchased for. So after eight years, it will reach half its purchase price. Now, use the formula to verify that it will be eight years. Let's do that here. So we're going to say that in order for it to be half the value, that means the value is 10,000, which is going to be equal to the 20,000 minus the 1,250 times some amount of time. We're going to isolate for T here by first subtracting 20,000. So I'm going to take away 20,000 from both sides, take away 20,000 from this side. Once I do that, I'm going to get negative 10,000 is equal to the negative 1,250 T I divide both sides by the T or by the 1,250 and thus, therefore, when you divide this 10,000, I'm going to do the algebra right here, divided by 1250, divided by 1250. When I divide by 1,250, I get an output of T equals eight years. So yes, this is correct here. Now, 
we look at our example below here just of the fill in the blanks and it says the original value of the car is 20,000. So we're going to put 20,000 here. And then it says it depreciates by a value of, well, how much was it changing year to year? We would say that it was the slope. And the slope of the equation was actually the part that was connected to our time value. So it decreases or depreciates by a value of, in this case, 1250. And we could throw in the negative here to indicate that it is decreasing by this much. But when we look at the word depreciates, it automatically indicates that it is going down by some value. And then we know that it is decreasing to the point that it has no value after 16 years, which was the T-intercept. That's when we finally hit that point of it was old enough that it had lost all its value. Now, last thing on this page before I get you to do the assignment in this, well, we know that when we search for algebraic methods of finding the intercepts, it is the exact values of the intercepts. Whereas when we use our graph, if we ever use a graph for these, it's a pure estimate and we cannot be 100% sure. So just know that if I ever ask you for the exact values of intercepts, know that it's going to be the algebraic type. Whereas then we move on to interpolation versus or interpolation versus extrapolation. Interpolation says that we're looking at for values that are inside or between given points. And then if we look at things beyond or we use prediction for outside of plotted points, this is extrapolation. So in this example from the last one, in examples D2 and 3, we had to use extrapolation to go beyond the data and figure out some value. All right, now it's time for you to work on the assignment. Really get to know x and y intercepts and how they can be found with any given equation.